Prompt engineering, the buzzword that's on everyone's lips. As we move further into 2023, it's become increasingly clear that prompt engineering is the highest leverage skill you can master to stay ahead of the game. But you must be thinking, where do I even begin? How can I leverage this great opportunity to its fullest potential? Well, you're in luck, my friend. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a deep dive into the world of prompt engineering. We'll explore what it is, why it's such a game changer, and how you can get started today. First things first, we'll walk you through the basics of prompt engineering and show you how to leverage the power of OpenAI's GPT model to create truly unique and customized experiences. We'll then dive into the nitty gritty of crafting the perfect prompt, sharing insider tips and tricks to help you get the results you want. But that's not all. We'll also be taking you on a tour of the OpenAI Playground, giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to use this powerful tool to your advantage. And if you're feeling a little overwhelmed, don't worry, I've got you covered. I'll break down the biggest opportunities and use cases in prompt engineering, so you'll know exactly how to capitalize on this game-changing technology. So whether you're an experienced AI enthusiast or you're just getting started, this video is for you. Buckle up and get ready to take your skills to the next level. Trust me, you won't want to miss a thing. This one's a banger. These videos take over 20 hours to make. I put a lot of time and effort into this to make sure you receive the best possible information. It'll be greatly appreciated if you can simply like and subscribe. So what is prompt engineering? Well, prompt engineering is a bit like being a chef in a fancy restaurant. Just like the chef carefully selects and combines ingredients to create a delicious dish, a prompt engineer carefully selects and combines words and phrases to create an effective prompt. Think of prompt engineering like a recipe. It tells the model what to do and how to do it. By carefully crafting the prompt, a prompt engineer can guide the model to produce the desired output. Whether that's writing a story, answering a question, or generating code. But don't be mistaken, it's not just throwing together any old word and hoping for the best. Just like a chef, a prompt engineer needs to have a deep understanding of their ingredient. In this case, the language models you're working with and how they will interact with a prompt. So if you want to have a great understanding of what prompt engineering is, make sure you watch this video all the way to the end. Now, most of our fun will be happening in OpenAI's playground. You may be thinking, what is the OpenAI playground? I like to think of it as a sandbox for artificial intelligence. Just like how kids use a sandbox to play with sand and create all sorts of structures and shapes, the OpenAI playground allows you to play around with different AI models and algorithms to see what kind of cool and creative things you can build. It's a place where you can experiment, make mistakes, and learn in a safe and fun environment. Just like how kids can invite their friends to join them in a sandbox, you can also collaborate with others in the OpenAI Playground to build even more amazing AI products. Let's jump into the Playground to see what I'm talking about. There are a few things to take note of. First is the temperature. In simple terms, temperature adjusts the level of creativity or surprise in the model's response. When the temperature is set low, the model will produce more predictable and conservative responses. On the other hand, when the temperature is set high, the model will produce more creative and unpredictable responses. Here's an example of how temperature can affect your results. So we've set the temperature to 0.5. So as you can see, it gave us a pretty predictable story. There was a brave knight who lived in a small kingdom. He was a loyal servant to the king and was always willing to risk his life in order to protect his people. And now once we change the temperature to one, it gives a more creative story. That's not the average story for a typical knight. Once upon a time, there was a brave knight who dared to venture into a dark castle in search of magical artifacts. So that's an example of how the temperature can affect the creativity of your result. Well, so once we change the temperature to 1, it gives a response that is much more creative and unexpected, with a plot that is unlikely to be found in a traditional fairy tale. As you can see, the temperature setting can have a significant impact on the creativity and unpredictability. By experimenting with different temperature settings, you can find the right balance between coherence and creativity for your specific use case. So how can you use temperature effectively in the open AI playground? The answer depends on you and your specific need, but here are a few tips to keep in mind when dealing with temperature. Start with a low temperature to get a feel of what the model has learned through your data. After that, you want to increase temperature gradually to have more creativity and diversity in your results. You're going to want to experiment with different temperature settings depending on the style of your different prompts. Some prompts may benefit from more predictable responses, whilst others need more creativity. Also, last tip, keep in mind that a higher temperature can lead to more grammatical errors in the results. So you must be prepared to do some filtering and final check. Overall, the temperature is a powerful tool in OpenAI's playground for adjusting between predictability and creativity in your results. With a bit of experimentation, you can use the temperature to fine tune the results that you get. Now we've got a greater understanding of the temperature and how you can make more diverse and creative responses. Responses. Let's move on to what affects the length of the generated text. The length of the generated text in OpenAI Playground is affected by what we call the max token setting. This setting determines the maximum number of tokens, i.e. the words and the punctuation.
situation that the model will generate in response to the prompt. For example, let's say you use the prompt, what is your favorite book? And set the max tokens to 10. Here is a possible response you might get. As you can see, this response is short and to the point. Since the max token setting is limited. On the other hand, if you increase the max token settings to 50, you might get a longer response like this. The longer response allows for more detail and nuances, which can be useful in certain contexts. Here are a few tips when using a max token setting. Think about the context and the purpose of what you're generating. If you're generating responses for a chatbot, for example, shorter responses might be more appropriate. If you're generating text for creative writing or storytelling, longer responses might be more useful. Tip number two, experiment with different max token settings to find the right balance between length and coherence. If you generate max tokens too high, the results may be too long and rambling on and very difficult to follow. On the other hand, if you set it too low, it might feel incomplete and not enough information. So just play around with that and see how you go. Now that you have a greater understanding of how to use the OpenAI Playground, I want to share a few prompt engineering techniques with you. One of the techniques you can use is called role prompting. This is where you give the AI a certain role to play, such as a chef, a teacher, a lawyer, a surgeon, anything you want really and then ask it to generate a response based on that role. This is a great way for the AI to understand what type of response you want and it will use similar type of responses that professionals within that industry will use. Let's jump into the playground and I'll show you an example of role prompting. Here's an example of assigning a role to the model where you want it to be a customer service representative and have interactions with a customer. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. Once I press enter, you'll see the results that come up. So we have a customer that's having trouble accessing his account and wants to reset the password. It automatically understands what type of response it needs and what role it needs to play, a customer service representative. So if I continue and ask it a few more questions. Now if I go ahead and paste this type of response, let's see what comes up. Thank you for providing your account number. Let's go ahead and reset your password. What would you like your new password to be? Let's go ahead and say, I would like it to be Muri El Huli. Let's see what response we get from here. Perfect, your password has been reset. Please make sure you write it down. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes. Sure, how can I help you? So as you can see, it gives you a response. A full, you can have a full conversation with this by simply assigning it a role and explaining what, what type of response you want this representative to give. Using the role prompting technique, you're able to generate different responses from different perspectives through the model and create more engaging and realistic scenarios when it comes to customer service. Now let's move on to the second technique I wanna share with you today, which is called shots prompting. So there are different forms of shot prompting. We have zero shot prompting, one shot prompting, and multiple shot prompts. Let's start off with zero shot prompting. Zero shot prompting is basically where you give it a prompt and you don't give any structure on how you want the answer to be. And most of the prompts that we've been using so far have been zero shot prompts. For example, I come in here and I say, Bob the Builder, can we fix it? And press enter. It'll give you the following answer to it. So I came in here and I typed, Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Yes, Bob the Builder can definitely fix it. Now if I say Bob the Builder can we fix it and ask it to finish the song, you're gonna get you'll get a different result. And it'll give you the whole chorus of the Bob the Builder song. This is an example of one shot prompting. I also want to show another example of one shot prompting when you give it a guideline on how to answer the question or how to answer your prompt. The example we used before was a perfect example of one shot prompting. The example of the customer service representative. So this example here we have a customer that has a question about the account. We show it how we want the representative to answer and we also give it that structure it needs. So then it can make clear decisions from there. So if we press submit, this is a perfect example of one-shot property. Role prompting and one-shot property kind of work hand in hand. So we've assigned it a role and then we've given it an example of how we want it to respond what the structure will look like, and then it'll just iterate from there. Now let's move on to a few shot prompting. Now a few shot prompting can be very powerful for idea generation if you know how to use it correctly. I personally use it to come up with effective YouTube titles and YouTube video ideas when I want to create content like this. Here's how I use it to generate good video ideas and good video titles for myself. I'll come in here and I'll feed it some data. I'll say here are five YouTube video titles that are trending right now. I'll put the titles in here. Then I'll go ahead and give it the prompt to give me five video titles that are going viral based off of this data around the topic of prompt engineering and make them 50 characters or less. Press submit. 
and voila you get five video ideas that are proven to do well based off of this track record which is the research that I've done and I can make content based off of that and that's how you could use few shot property to your advantage when you want to create content or anything that involves ideation Keep that in mind. Now let's move on to the third prompt engineering technique I want to share with you today. I find this one to be very powerful depending on what you want to use it for and that's called chain of thought prompting. Now what we're going to do through chain of thought prompting is teach the model the process of your thinking, the process of your problem solving and it'll use that exact same process to solve other problems. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. So if I give it this prompt over here and I ask it, give it the two options, same problem and I'll walk it through option one will take 20 plus 50 plus 20 or which equal 90 minutes. Option 2 will take 90 plus 50 plus 20, which will equal 160 minutes. Since option 1 takes 90 minutes and option 2 takes 160 minutes, option 1 is faster. If I go ahead and put the exact same problem that we had before, after giving it a walkthrough on how to solve this problem and answer this question, we'll get a totally different response. And I'll also give you the steps that it's gone through to figure out the answer. So now, the exact same problem that we had before is saying option 2 is faster, which is the correct answer. Before we're saying option one is fast. And that's how you can use chain of thought prompting to teach the model, the process of thinking, and the process of coming up with a solution. This can be very powerful when you want to get things done quickly, when you want to solve problems quickly after you've trained it on how to do it the first time. Now let's move on to the greatest opportunities in prompt engineering. There are three ways that I find that you can make money within the next one to two years using this prompt engineering skill. The first is to provide your skill as a prompt engineer as a service to businesses. You can either help businesses create content through your knowledge and through your understanding of prompt engineering. You can either solve certain problems for a business and they can hire you as a prompt engineer to create more efficient systems for their workflow. That's the lowest opportunity as a prompt engineer. Second opportunity you have as a prompt engineer is you can create training courses and training programs for companies and just even beginners that want to become prompt engineers. If you get knowledgeable on the topic, you can create training programs for companies, for businesses, and train them how to use AI technology so that they become more efficient in their work. So your first option was to offer it as a service. Second option, which has a high income potential, is training programs, online courses for prompt engineering. It's a highly sought after skill that a lot of people are trying to get into right now. They need to learn from somewhere. That's what I'm creating this for, but this is totally free. The third, and what I believe to be the greatest opportunity when it comes to using prompt engineering skills is to use the GPT-3 model to create tools for businesses like chatbots and other services that will make their lives much, much easier. And that's where I will be allocating my time. If you want more information on how to do that, I've got a video on the top five businesses that you can create using AI technology. Make sure you watch that.